Ukraine launched drone attacks on jet fuel producing plant near Russia's Tver region on the night leading to June 27. The plant named the Redkinsky Experimental Plant, is of strategic importance due to its production of unique chemical products used by Russian aviation and space industry for several decades. The plant is located about 40 kilometers from Tver. All four Ukrainian drones were downed by Russian air forces. Russian Defense Ministry reported that the attack on the plant was carried out with the use of fixed-wing unmanned aerial vehicles. According to the ministry statement, two other Ukrainian drones were shot down over the Moscow region and one over the Belgorod region on the Ukrainian border on the same day. Russian media reported that the pipeline, roof, and building of one of the plant's workshops were damaged during the attacks. There have been no casualties, with media stating that factory employees were evacuated safely. Drones attacked the plant at around 2 a.m., according to Russian telegram channel Baza. One of the drones allegedly hit the roof of workshop number 4, after which it exploded, while another drone was downed by air defense forces, after which its debris fell not far from the workshop, causing an explosion there a few minutes later, Ukrainian media reported. The third drone attacked flammable liquids enterprise, causing damage in a pipeline and fire. The fourth drone attacked the plant's territory two hours later, targeting workshop number four again. This was Ukraine's second attack on the Redkinsky plant. Kiev hit the plant in September last year. An apparent coup attempt in Bolivia has subsided, with President Luis Arce asserting his authority over the country's military. Earlier, troops led by Army General Commander Juan José Zuniga had stormed the presidential palace and taken up positions in the square outside. News reports indicated a tank slammed the palace doors. But within hours, Zuniga urged the soldiers to withdraw, after leaders from around the world blasted the army's actions as illegal. Arce urged citizens to take to the streets to defend the country's democracy from an apparent coup attempt, after troops seized control of a central square in La Paz which houses government buildings. I am your captain, and I order you to withdraw your soldiers, and I will not allow this insubordination, Arce told Zuniga. We need the Bolivian people to mobilize and organize themselves against this coup d'etat and in favor of democracy, Arce said in a video message filmed at the Great House of the People, the official presidential residence in Bolivia's de facto capital of La Paz. Flanked by members of his cabinet, Arce declared, we cannot allow, once again, attempted coups to claim Bolivian lives. Long live the people of Bolivia. Long live democracy. The ministers shouted, thrusting their left fists into the air. Long live our president, Luis Arce. Zuniga, who was dismissed as commander of the Bolivian army just a day earlier, was later detained and seen being forced into a police vehicle, according to local media. His current whereabouts are unknown. Bolivian Defense Minister Edmundo Novillo told a news conference the armed forces were under control. Bolivia's Attorney General's office said it has launched a criminal investigation against Zuniga and all the other participants involved in the incident. Bolivia has a long history of political instability, including military coups, and the failed takeover comes as the landlocked South American country of about 12 million people struggles with a spiraling economic crisis that has sparked street protests.
que no se lo va a permitir el general. Eso es un capital, comandante de la fuerza. Aquí está su capitán. Aquí está su capitán. Aquí está su capitán. Con el pueblo boliviano y con la democracia en nuestro país. Vamos a batallar, vamos a litigar, no serán procesos fáciles dentro del territorio nacional. Estas dos personas se encontraban al interior de un vehículo blindado el cual impactó en contra de las puertas de la Casa de la Democracia en nuestro país, en contra del Palacio Quemado, y ellos buscaban derrocar un gobierno democráticamente electo, electo con más de 3.4 millones de votos.